Uh, good evening, guys. Happy New Year. Uh, this is Ken at Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for January 3rd, 2023. Uh, so I want to start off with a case study that shows the connection between our weekend strategy podcast, where we're looking at swing trade frames, and intraday trading uh, as a way to really highlight what we mean by core and turbo. We'll be featuring the collapsing dragon pattern today, and we're looking at Apple. And so this weekend, Charles uploaded uh, the multi time frame chart that we used. He used a weekly, daily, and then a 65 minute chart. And for purposes of clarity, I'm just going to look at the uh, daily chart and the 65 minutes. So this is the daily frame that he had put in and he know we noticed that it had achieved a swing low and then a couple days of recovery so there was like a little hook and it had closed here just above 129.93 and he identified a minimum manageable risk box and he was prepared to trade out of that compound critical state in either direction and he had identified 136 and 123 as the next level critical states uh, as targets. He looked at the swing low here as an opportunity to add positions. When you then jump over into the 65 minute chart, same sense making uh, diagrams, uh, I just want to note that the um, uh, the uh, entry that he was looking at here at the belly of the RL10 translates to an entry at 129. So this is where it closed. This was his structured uh, risk box bracketing that that price here. Uh, and he was ready to get short if it violated here or get long if it got got out of that box using each box as his manageable swing risk box. In that uh, in that uh, session we identified the opportunity to uh, get short at 129 as opposed to waiting for that full move here because that was the level where the PSAR had flipped previously and this was uh, on the intraday that would be enough of a uh, risk box uh, in order to get short and then you could think about intraday adding a second or a third position or even a fourth position intraday so that if it actually did make the move to 123 uh, you would have a massively good intraday position and then you could harvest 80 percent of it to make bank and then keep 20 percent as a way to get well started in a swing trade with risk capital that was funded by the intraday trade in this tactical zone so that was the scenario that we walked through among a dozen others uh, this weekend so what I want to just pull across are those four price levels uh, to show what happens, you know, where uh, where this thing opened and, and then what happened. So, uh, the, again, this was the close right here at 129.91, okay? So we're going to shift, oops, we're going to shift to a three-minute uh, chart. Or if actually, maybe this is a five minute. Yeah. All right. So what we got out of Apple uh, was this. Uh, there was actually a tradable move for the pure day traders inside here. That if you had taken the OR3, we would typically be able to get long uh, here and then ride that early morning surge and then probably end up exiting somewhere around here uh, and making bank on that move. In his trade frame, which was really waiting for those 60, that 65 minute price levels to hit, uh, you will notice that he ends up getting short at the first tactical opportunity we identified. We added that to his trade frame. Uh, or he could have just waited to get short uh, where he had originally planned. So either one of those two uh, is a legit uh, entry short. And you'll notice that if you use the uh, first entry, 
um, if you are using the same dollars at risk, that because the risk box is smaller, your position size can be larger, but at no additional open risk to your position if you can manage this risk box as uh, as a one R stop. If you are going to use this entry as he had programmed, then your risk box would look like this, and, and then you would be basically using this as your standard risk box. So either one of these entries, as modified, uh, would meet uh, that criteria. Now, yeah, we notice that we also had identified the PSAR flip point here and then also here. So we were considering what to do at those at those prices. Uh, if you ended up taking both of these entries, you probably don't want a third position that soon. You'd like to get deeper into the money, but you might be willing to add a third position at 126. And that's what we mean by the yellow yellow dot. If you had taken only one or the other of those, then when price gets to the yellow dot, uh, you could either be getting your stop to no lose plus dinner for two or adding the second position here. So there are a number of different options that you can use depending on the time frame that you're using. Uh, no matter what, uh, by the time you get to 126 and a half, uh, you are, no matter no matter which combination of entries you use, you are well in the money by this point. And your stop, whether it was here, uh, or here, or a combination, you should be, you should be here, and able to lock in, at a minimum, this much on either one or two positions. Uh, at this point, if you haven't put a second position in, you should. If you have, if you had two in, you could consider putting a third one in if you're looking to pile on. So any of that is possible. And then the follow through uh, pays you off in a large way on either one, two, three, or four positions, and it just kept getting better <coughs> for the rest of the day. So now what Charles is able to do is take the intraday money that is earned out of this trade, <coughs> exit sometime today, maybe somewhere, you know, not north of this, but exiting somewhere down around in here for 80% to get paid, <coughs> and then using that money to fund the 20% of open risk if he wants to hold that position overnight, which is a choice that he gets to make. That's a good problem to have. And that illustrates the idea of core being the swing position that is set up by the 65 minute and the daily chart. And then the turbo in which we are using good intraday technique in this region uh, to make bank on the lower risk time frame, which is intraday, because you don't have to contend with gaps. And then using that to fund the core positions that are indicated, you know, by the longer time frame. So that's a quick look at core and turbo. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so let's shift to um, uh, sniper trade of the day. So this one is just to show uh, folks that it's not just our tactical trading targets, which are much more volatile than the market, but also liquid. You can even use this inside the market itself. So we're just going to take a look at a three-minute charts on SPY and use that for today's uh, sniper trade. So this was um, the close was uh, last uh, Friday, and then the gap to here, and then the three-minute bar goes down and then comes up and that establishes an OR3 opening range 3 and so we're right because the next bar breaks out to the upside we're willing to take that long we also would have been ready to take this short on a closure and then using the uh, minimum manageable risk box in the middle uh, as our uh, initial risk so this one gets long we have a standard risk on a nice gift like that right away, um, 
it climbs to here by which time you have one unit of reward almost two units of ri of I'm sorry one unit of risk and almost two units of reward and then it starts rolling over uh, I look at that one and say look I'd like to keep about half of that I didn't get a very good fill and maybe I was too optimistic but I was able to exit the initial position uh, here and make bank on that little snack it's about a 0.5 um, and maybe I gave back too much okay I accept that and now we notice that the um, RL10 has peaked and crossed the baby dragon so I'm ready to take as soon as it breaks below that uh, like the one bar low I'm ready to just exit that one check or hold continues to fail uh, it fails through the piece are uh, and when the uh, the RL10 breaks into the dragon I'm ready inside this bar to get short so I end up getting short here I put the same standard wrist box on it that we used here and that's uh, it's about 97 cents or something like that man I just rounded it off to a dollar uh, per share of risk as the MMRB minimum manageable risk box which is the R10 which is one tenth of a range stat which is the uh, maximum reasonable intraday move and that's what we use to calibrate the um, the most optimistic yet reasonable professional estimate of a size of a move and this represents one-tenth of that so there in theory there could be if you went from the high of the day and then dropped it down and you counted off 10 of those boxes that lower limit would give you what a reasonable intraday target uh, might be so ten dollars ten dollars short of this if the MMRB is about a buck then the range stats gonna be around ten bucks which is about a three percent move in the S&P um, so you could you could see a, a fail of minus ten dollars and it would still be within normal conditions based on statistics so there's our entry short manageable risk box uh, somewhere in here uh, you by this time you had better have your stop here to lock in at least that much gain and take your risk out and then this was an orderly exit so one of the things that you give up with the S&P are violently volatile moves compared to the components but what you gain is the orderly intraday progression with lots of volume and very narrow spreads and so here you have the R10 the RL10 the 10 period regression line basing out crossing the baby dragon that puts you on alert that the downward move is probably weakening and then that gives me a one two three exit at the edge of the dragon so instead of waiting for you know the declining piece are <coughs> or letting it get all the way back up to here I just take it right there and then that's one unit of reward and that's about two units maybe one and a half units of uh, reward so one unit of risk one and a half units of reward so altogether we're at about plus two right now if we count that as about 0.5 and this is about 1.5 you get that uh, we're about plus two for the day I stop and reverse here uh, because it's not quite stop and reverse but it, it just gets above 
above the zero line, so it's becoming the summer. So that makes this, you guessed it, supported spring crossing. There's the measured low. The crossing of the dragon, taking out of the PSAR. There is your minimum manageable risk box. And now I'm looking for it to get to the top of the dragon or top of the RL10. Uh, and remember, when we consider our range stat, we can actually say, look, if this is the low of the day, and it is, then it is still possible to get a plus range stat to the upside. So it could be plus 10 bucks from this price level as a reasonable target to the upside. So there's plenty of room to the upside, even though we've seen this move already. Now, of course, it can still it can still go ten dollars from here to the downside. That's how it works. But that allows us to calibrate our expectations. So this one moves out. It doesn't really follow through. So we get a no lose plus dinner for two exit. So we capture a little piece and then it falls through uh, the PSAR once more. And now what we have is a high, a lower high. The R10 has come through the dragon, violates the PSR. Uh, so we're ready to be short in the usual way with the MMRB. Check or hold. What we're really doing on that one, by the way, is front running the collapsing dragon. So the collapsing dragon on this one is when the belly of the RL10 gets violated and you almost got to be automatically short. So by letting price come across the dragon here and taking out the piece and getting short here, we're actually taking advantage of that little bit of tactical space to get our position in. We want our position in here before it becomes a runaway disaster. Like if it violates here, this thing should fail quickly. And I don't want to wait for that moment and then try to chase it. I want to just lock in while the indication is that it's leaning that way. That's a trade that is, as uh, uh, Mike points out, is in the pocket. Because we think of this space between the edge of the dragon and the belly of the RL10. This little space in here we think of that as the pocket. So it's a little a little bit of temporary calm. Uh, so we get short here. Standard risk box. And now notice uh, when that R10 gets violated, that first move down is actually a pretty strong directional move. You could even take your risk from here and then mark it off to here so that you could lock in if you wanted to. No lose plus dinner for two. And now you've taken all of your risk out of there. You'll never lose money on that trade. And how many times a day do you see this little pattern? A hundred. So... What if you traded all 100 of them and all of 100, you had that habit of getting your risk out and being in a position to never put your capital at risk? That is a, you start accumulating that feeling over time and you start building your emotional resilience. Now, I also want you to notice that when we get like uh, one, two, three PSAR dots in our favor, this thing is starting to move out in our direction. And what started off as our minimum manageable risk, the PSAR sort of tells you where the transition point between, you know, speculation and positive expectancy really is. It's somewhere around three or four PSAR dots. So what that, if you're using the Uwe exit strategy, which we outline in one of our courses, that's a mechanical exit which says, 
uh, you just keep that in place. Then by the fourth, at the by the time the third dot prints, you come down to the fourth dot and put that in, or maybe even pick up the piece R at that point. Um, and then what it does is this is the this is the time that you're giving it to decide which way it wants to go. And now it's created a bit of a buffer for you in here in which to start managing your trade. You'd like that to be a routine, um, no thinking required exit management strategy. So no matter how you do that, you end up managing your trade. And on this one, it looks easy because, well, it's also SPY. So it's a fairly orderly thing. If you just take the piece or just take that exit, you got one unit of risk and probably one and a half units of reward. So we're at about 3.5 so far. Check or hold. Now it's coming into the lunchtime and other things were happening. So we just kind of let that one go. I would also tell you that... Um, uh, if you take that and then this break down here, you shouldn't lose money on that trade. At worst, you're going to get a break even. But it's starting to get into the lunchtime chop. So we're just sort of happy to uh, routinely manage the broad market itself for 3.5 to the downside. <coughs> Uh, Tesla is your friend. So I'm just going to use a five minute chart on Tesla. Um, you can do it with three minutes, which is to vary it up a little bit. So there was a big gap down in Tesla, and this was the OR5, the second five minute bar broke below that. This is the OR5 and it works the same way as the OR3. Um, so this is the entry short. That's the standard risk box in Tesla, the, the R10 MMRB. Uh, this is plus 1R, plus 2R. So this one is the 2R battle drill for automatically adding the second position. It moves into our favor and starts retracing. So we take a one, two, three exit at the edge of the dragon. And we end up making a little bit on the second position, while the first position is about two is about two point two. And this one is about a point two. So we're about at two point four on Tesla on the OR5 and collapsing dragon. Check or hold. Uh, it rolls over right away. And uh, there's your manageable risk box. There's a collapsing dragon. That's your 2R battle drill. So one unit of risk. Two units of reward, automatic second entry to our battle drill. So there's no cognitive effort on that one other than just commit to doing it. By that time, you certainly <clears throat> want to have your stop somewhere around in here so that your second entry uh, is locked into the money as well so that you get basically that same configuration. 
and on this one uh, it started stabilizing cross the dragon so we just lock in that's about 3R and now this one uh, becomes a supported spring crossing because that constitutes a harsh winter bottoms out crosses the dragon uh, we get our uh, manageable risk box drawn on here. Now this is the case where if it violated below here, I would be short that one quick, fast, and in a hurry. So I'm really only risking this much, which is about a 0.5R. If I waited to see a, well, I'm going to wait and see a full minus 1R. I, I don't do that because any price that falls below here is already rejecting the hypothesis of the upside. The hypothesis to the upside is that we just saw the low of the day and people are, all the value players are coming in and buying. Well, what's the price that tells us that that ain't working? Uh, it would be a violation below here. So I don't need to give it that extra room I'll just buy I'll just use this as for my standard risk, standard position size, and then if it hits, I'll just take a half an hour loss. So I've already taken half an hour risk out of this trade altogether. The worst I'll ever do on it is minus 0.5. Check or hold. And then, lo and behold, uh, somewhere around, somewhere around in here, you want to get your risk out, and maybe you pick up the southern skin of the dragon. That's reasonable. Uh, and then, if I saw a one, two, I might just take that one and uh, and cash that and say, you know what? Uh, I'll take that one. I didn't put a second position on this one, although if I had just taken the size of the standard box, somewhere around in here I'd be getting a second position. But we were getting late in the day, and I believe that, and I believe this is just opportunistic. That's just a, a limiting belief, but I was not going to do a two-hour battle drill on that one. Uh, and then we're getting close to the end of the day, and so I just I give it a one, two, three exit. And pick up an extra, um, an extra R, in here. And uh, was happy to call that one a day, and it just kind of went sideways. So a second trade of the day. <clears throat> All right, looking at the uh, intraday. So we're just taking a look at the um, some market health check now. So we're looking at SPY. This is the SPY on 30 minute. So this gives us our five day box, five day low. Um, today's five day high, I'm sorry, it was up here. It gapped up to here, went that high, and then did this for the rest of the day. Uh, we, we saw that on the SPY trade and then closed here. So, um, the one day range was actually pretty large once it got it got done with all the gappy and trapping all the optimists and then did this that's where you got that and all that did was went up and collected a bunch of optimistic longs and brought everything right back to about the midpoint of the 10 day average so it just collected optimism and then came back and reverted to the mean. Done. Done in one. Now, when it closes here and establishes this, so we actually have some of the conditions for a Kata 2 tomorrow. So if we were to frame this as something like that, any breakout above here is tradable with a view towards the five-day high statistically and the 10-day high because you have two units of reward. If that's your risk, 
you have two units of reward to one unit of risk and a reasonable 10-day high is the estimate to the upside. By the same token, any violation below the belly of the R10 is instant short. And then you could even set this one up here. That's below the low of the day and breaking that support level. That would be an instant short second position. Uh, and then the 10-day low break at 375, that would be a third position. So what you have is a nice compound critical state. The traders had a lot of extra money, as indicated by the gap up and initial buying. And there's a lot of trading activity, as seen by the sell-off. And some people looking for value on both sides of the this market, as indicated by the fact that it held support in the last couple hours. So this is a perfect compound critical state once more. Notice how it finished up in between yesterday's PSAR box. So that breakout there could be interesting. This a breakdown here would be interesting. This is your compound critical state right there. From 379 to 381, that's a two dollar risk box. <clears throat> and we're using one dollar uh, as the S&P's risk box. So, and remember, this is a 30-minute chart. Go back and look at the S&P on the three-minute, which is the first sniper trade of the day, and you'll see why a one-dollar risk box is certainly manageable. Uh, when we widen our aperture a little bit and take a look now at the, um, let's go to. Uh, 30 days of look back these are now this is now the S&P on a daily chart here's your this is the size of that one day box the five day range the 10 day box and now the 30 day box and we had our little high a little rollover now you can see that we've established a bit of a trading range at the statistical 10-day low where the belly of the RL10 and the statistical high of the peak of the RL10. That's sort of your 30-day trading range from 406 to 376. That's a $30 range on a three on a four hundred dollars stock. That's about seven and one half percent of stretch inside that box. The 10 day was actually really tight because of the low volume, low range holiday trading. So breakouts from this 10 day to me are going to tell you something important. And we didn't do that today. Uh, we got a little bit close right here, but breakouts from that 10 day range feel like they're going to be important. Uh, inside the context of the 150-day look back, we now have our 150-day box here. There's our 150-day low. And now you can see the 30-day context inside of that, the 10-day, the 5-day, and now the 1-day. So to me, this breakout from the 10-day range is the, that's why I would think of this as a compound critical state. It's ready to break. The downside would be much more decisive. This will be an incremental climb. This one feels like it would be a collapse. So I'm ready for the market to be asymmetric in the way it responds with price action. When we take a look at today's uh, indexes, <coughs> excuse me, uh, well, let's start with the upside. We'll see the S&P first. It was down 0.42 for the day. Then our six uh, big indexes, treasuries were best at 1.9, then emerging markets at 0.8. Diamonds basically flat, and that was the cut line between actual winners and losers in our tactical symbol set. Uh, the Ru Russell was off 
0.55. And tech, far from being a leader, well, it led to the downside, that's for sure, at minus 0.68. <clears throat> what worked for today? Uh, staples, uranium, and materials didn't lose quite as much. Uh, the next big stack of sectors, these are the shaded ones, uh, commercial real estate, silver, residential real estate, the two lumber ETFs at 0.2 and 0.34, finance and Bitcoin at 0.35 and 0.6, Ethereum and Mexico, 1.2 and 1.8, wheat and precious metals, uh, 3.8. Uh, and now individual companies that outperformed. Uh, PayPal was the best at 4.7. Uh, then we had two of our three metals finished better than the market and better than their sector, which is XLB. And that's U.S. Steel basically flat, but then Cliff was 4.22. Now, uh, Intel, one of our semis was better than the market. The other two were worse. So Intel was 1.1. And that's important because that kind of bucked the trend of the technology um, losses for today. This was up 1.1, so that may be significant. So PayPal for 4.7. Squarespace and Boeing. 2.57. We looked at Boeing hard this weekend as a upside trade. The war machine. Uh, Microsoft was a little better than the S&P, only down 0.1, but kind of a disappointment. Uh, downside performers. Again, our baseline, the S&P, minus 0.42. That 0 0.87, that's the R10 manageable risk box. I just rounded that off uh, to a dollar for my purposes today. So we had uh, consumer discretionary off 0.6. Then the stack of the VIX, S&P Tech, Aussie Dollar, Agriculture, Lithium, Fangs, Marijuana, Biotech, down to 1.77. Arc Genomics, Blended Commodities, Clean Energy, Arc Inno, or, I'm sorry, Arc Genomics, yeah, Arc Innovation, and Oil off three and a half. Just no love whatsoever there. Uh, then Oil Exploration and Brazil off 5.6 and 7.5%. EWZ was an excellent intraday trade for the index players, that frog champion. It was, it gapped up and then just sold off all day. Uh, individual companies that underperformed Tesla down 12 and a quarter percent to close at 108. Remember, that's a split adjusted price of about 320 off an upside all time high of 950. And they've brought in the head of their China distribution to come in as number two man at Tesla to see if he can't fix uh, domestic Tesla distribution because they under delivered about 10 percent to what the market expected the market uh, we're looking for delivery of about 440,000 vehicles they only delivered 410,000 so they're not even performing to that standard much less making money so they they are at a compound critical state which makes Tesla the most important stock in the world all right, so in energy, Devon Energy uh, down 5.1. I want you to notice that it's a leveraged play on energy in the same way that XOP is. That when oil is down 3.5, Devon's down 5.5, and oil exploration is down 5.6. General economic slowdown there. Uh, Coinbase and Apple down minus 3.7 and 5%. Uh, here's our two other semis. Remember, Intel was at plus 1.1%, but Texas Instruments and NVIDIA were down 1.2 and 2%. And then Alcoa was the only metal that was below the market at 
minus 2%. So there were net sellers in Alcoa today. You know, part of that is it inherited some of the weakness from the Dow. But this was, because this was worse than the Dow, that's people actually selling Alcoa today. Um, so that's a quick look at the markets for today. Um, only one uh, trade to comment on uh, in our coaching program here. This is Woj. And uh, he gets the, here's the OR3 entry in Devon. So he goes long here, stops in reverse, gets paid here. I would like to see you take the one, two, three exit right here when it crosses the dragon. And you will pick up an extra about 0.5, which I think is important to help pay off that wedge right there. Now, the he was in a meeting, uh, but otherwise he would have taken this PSAR flip and then dominated on that trade. So that's the cost of the meeting. <clears throat> uh, in Tesla, he gets the OR3 entry. So he's using a three-minute instead of the five-minute. Um, he gets a quick scratch, a quick re-entry, gets paid, misses the next follow-through here, but he does get one. Uh, in U.S. Steel, he gets the OR3 entry. I think he gave back too much on that one. When it's got three bars and couldn't make a new high, I'd like to see you get out here, either at the one, two, three, or at the edge of the dragon, and that will help you keep uh, that extra wedge right there, which is 0.8. That would make this a 1.6 instead of a 0.8. That makes all the difference, those little incremental changes. Uh, Apple, uh, he goes for the initial long and the OR3. It reverses, or he exits. He waits for the PSAR to flip and then crushes this. Now, the 2R battle drill would have kicked in approximately there. And if you were using the 2R battle drill, you automatically get your second position here. And that would make this almost 7R. I love this exit. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if you started it again. But uh, altogether, 5.7. This might have been anywhere from 8 to 10 R today with a little bit of fine tuning uh, inside, your, uh, inside your managed exits there. Okay. Uh, my brother just yelled to me and said he had uploaded one. So let's see what he's got. Tesla is our friend. Here's a little core and turbo for you. So uh, he plays the, there's your gap down, and his minimum manageable risk box off the top, gets a second position. That's 4R in hand right there. So he adds his third position. He gets the reversal in here, cashes, waits for the break. Uh, when it it gets into the dragon and reverses, gets short, automatic second position on the rebound. He caches, uh, waits for the PSR flip, gets long for basically a scratch, uh, a scratch, and maybe, and keeps one position overnight. When the smoke clears and he cleans up the workshop, 16.4R for the day, and then holding one position overnight so that's one sixteenth of his gains he takes the money he pays himself 15 uses 0.4 to pay commissions and then kicks one over to hold with a wider stop on the short position here so he's risking about six and a half percent of his capture and holds the overnight position on the Tesla. That's how you do that. Nice work, brother.
All right, we'll take a look at the um, reports for the day. Uh, we'll start with dashboard number one. Uh, for those of you keeping score at home, uh, I put this little flashcard into uh, Patreon for you yesterday with a detailed explanation in a table that explains the guts behind each of those uh, 14 different areas um, that we're talking about in, on that dashboard number one. So you can download it from there. Uh, just quickly then running through this, uh, still bearish normal. The 30 day is very weak and the short term weakness from today was evident. Um, the risk Z it was not a wild volatile day and there's still actual some potential for some upside move. As I showed you this today's little sell off was simply the sell off from the big gap up and initial surge of optimism for the new year and punishing it back to the 10 day. Uh, Tesla remains the max pain along with Alcoa who is a net seller today uh, and ExxonMobil and Brazil were both weak nothing wrong with that uh, in the Dow tactical after the gap uh, the rest of the intraday move was not exceptional in fact there was a lot of doji action in there and only a couple like Pfizer and Tesla who test out on the auto framer. Tesla was a big breakdown loser. Apple significantly a loser today on all of the measured look back periods. Significant. 5DD in Walgreen and it's pushing near the bottom. It hasn't broken down totally yet but it's there ready to break. JP Morgan looks like the winner inside the finance sector. One of only two breakouts. And then uh, Verizon actually had a pretty good day today, up 1.9%, while JP Morgan was up 0.75. So those two are kind of stealthily getting it done. That's how stealthy Verizon is on the min pain. Boeing as well. Uh, inside the ETF tactical, uh, Brazil with a breakdown today is at 2.1 on the auto framer. And it had a 10 day breakdown. Um, gold was a big winner. Uh, oil exploration and weakness in the energy sector altogether. Uh, and Treasuries had a nice rebound day today at 2.4. That's a rotation into chasing some yield and minimizing exposure to equities. <clears throat> in the auto framer, just four symbols testing out better than two to one on the retest of the 10 day high. Tesla, Treasuries, Pfizer, and Brazil. Not a bad looking list for targets. Only IBM and Pfizer on a daily squeeze. Uh, shifting to the sniper targets. Uh, plenty of Godzillas still. Notice that today's move in Tesla was a four sigma move. And then you the the stealthy Godzillas on the five day started waking up today in, and there's your apple. I called that one last week. That's the one. If for some reason you don't want to trade Tesla, Apple is getting it done. It was actually a regular range kind of a day. Um, the, there were only a handful that had one day sigmas larger than two. Her Southwest Airlines still getting murdered. Uh, 
uh, regular stats, tactical symbol set. The um, these two are such no-brainers right now. I like clean energy on the short side, and Exxon Mobil and De so energy is really popping right now. And there's XLE, and there's your Apple. I mean, that's all you need for tomorrow. I mean, being honest, guys. Tale of two cities. Uh, what's getting smoked? Energy, Apple, Tesla. What's dominating? Uh, J.P. Morgan, Nike, Cisco. I guess PayPal, but you got to be careful on those guys. Boeing, ugh. Boeing smash. That's a shift in trend in treasuries. Broadly weak in the sell-off as yields rise and the price goes down. And now they're buying them. Gold, finance, Europe, Euro-Asia. So that's the not U.S. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, Feels like crypto has found a natural lower limit. I hate to say that, <laughs> but that's what the numbers say. I'm just telling, I'm just reading the numbers. Here's our top 10 by trading value. And uh, it remains uh, Tesla, clean energy. Let's see, let me bring it up a little bit more. Steady, Kenny. So you get a high TV ratio when you multiply the average range percentage times the frog quality number. That gives you this number, the trading value ratio. So you take a symbol that is highly volatile on average and consistently volatile that's how you get a large frog quality number and you multiply those together to get this computation and then sort by this column and these are the top 10 reliably large uh, intraday movements great trading vehicles Tesla if it's in the pink or this orange then it's a stock. If it's blue, it's an ETF. Tesla, Clean Energy, Alcoa, Disney, Oil Exploration, Brazil, Apple, Boeing, Metals and Mining, and CAT. That's how you get those numbers. My brother reminds us, say, Godzilla's moved for two to five days. And if you thought the, the pain and suffering in Tesla was over, and we just look at the nine-day work on that one, the nine-day markup. You know, all it's done uh, here with this last fail. You know, for the long-term point of view, the swing traders... The nine-day bars with the simple sniper setup, look what you get when you get the PSAR flips here. That was telling you that short at 240. And now here we are. Remember, this is a log scale. So if you were short from 240 to 60, a $60 risk, that was a 20% initial stop, and it's gone from 240 to 100. So it's made 140 on 60. That's a 2.5R signal using the 9-day bar, which is essentially two weeks. And now what it's done... <clears throat> Uh, 
this little collapse has taken out that support level, which was the base which supported that move. And then that move supported your, like a kata two. And there was your piece, and then your next leg up. And now you got these lower highs. You, you cannot hide price action on these longer time frames. It screens out the noise. Here was a collapsing dragon for this thing, yeah, to get short at 240 ish or 250. So now, if this collapses, the next price level that's in play is this midpoint here. 50. There's another 50% loss baked into the cake. And then the only people who will be crowing is everybody that was the early adopters. Mm, mm, mm. And you can see, the other thing I want you to notice is that if you go to the, uh, uh, to the, this rejection of the zero line, this was telling you, this is where uh, the winter began was in here so all of this is pure winter on the four seasons using the nine day and so the nine day is in the midpoint between weekly and monthly that gives you a nice longer term smooth price action and you can bet the bank bet the farm on those PSAR flips so Look out below. All right, that's everything we got for today. We'll get this published and posted and be ready be ready for them tomorrow. This one uh, was a pretty good lesson today. I would consider replaying this one multiple times uh, to really make sure you understand all the technical pieces from the earlier uh, case studies. Okay, take good care, and we shall see you tomorrow.